This Sunday's Eucharist is joyful. It, in the Latin, it was Laetare Sunday. Rejoice always, as it says in the second reading. <clears throat> and the first reading is about rejoice because God has not abandoned you. God is in your midst, so fear not. The readings this Sunday, getting closer and closer to the celebration of the birth of Jesus, which we call Christ's Mass, Christmas. <clears throat> what, what do you think, I've been praying with this, what would be the perfect Christmas? What would that be like? Would it, where I was born, um, raised, was a perfect Christmas had to have snow. Well, that's not true everywhere. But for me, I, I, I thought it was a sad Christmas if the sun was shining, because that meant there wasn't going to be more snow. I love snow at Christmas. So what is the perfect Christmas for you? Uh, it certainly isn't that you got somebody the perfect present or that you got the perfect present because you wouldn't know what the perfect present would be. I was with uh, a group of young Jesuits in formation and there was one for two straight Christmases when we would decorate the Christmas tree would throw tinsel at the tree. He would sit there and take strands of it and throw it. And um, I asked him one time, why, why would you do that? He went, that's fun. I said, yeah, but it's, it says something. He said, well, the truth is we never had happy Christmases at our house. And I hated the Christmas tree. And as soon as it <clears throat> could be taken out of the house, the better. Um, and of course it was family disturbance and separation and, <clears throat> and that happens in, in, our, in our days. It's amazing to me the divisions in families about vaccine, about politics, about church. I think we, there's something in us that likes division because then we know who we really are. I am this, I'm certainly not that. And that gives us some imperfect delight. Maybe the perfect Christmas might be the reality of the breakdowns of division, of separation as much as possible. Some separations can't be fixed. I know that. There are divisions that are so hurtful that it would take a miracle. And maybe Christmas is a miraculous time then. But for the most part, a perfect Christmas would be that we are not separated from anyone whom we love. It, that would be the gift. And, and maybe the call is, what is our role in creating union? So I, I put together union and perfection, <coughs> excuse me, union and perfection meaning the same word. That the perfection of God is God's simple unity and Jesus called us to unity that they all may be one that's his desire we'll come back to that it's it's interesting in today's gospel different groups were coming to John the baptizer saying what should we do to continue the baptism What's, what's the obligation here? And John the Baptist has some helpful hints. You tax collectors don't take more than what you're supposed to. 
Everybody wants to know, what should I do? Yeah, I'm not so sure that's the way to live. I think in the spiritual life and in following Jesus, the should changes to want. What do I want to do? And I'm surprised John the Baptist, when the tax collectors came and said, what should we do? He said, what's in you to do? What would be delightful for you? And they said, well, to get more money. But John the Baptist would say, oh, I'm not so sure of that. I think most division is caused by fear. Fear of not measuring up, fear of not being enough. So if I can fulfill the shoulds, then I'm in. Shoulds don't cause happiness. They cause completion or satisfaction, in a sense, very temporarily. Desires, to share desires, might make it a perfect Christmas, to, to, at least to know our desires. What do we really want? I don't really want snow anymore. But I do want togetherness and union and being with the people whom I love and the people whom you love. You want to be with them. Why? Because what's perfect is union. And what's perfect is working towards that union and breaking down division and arguments and injuries. What should we do? What do you want to do? Do you want, do you, do you, do you really long for the perfection of union? Well, the pain of Christmas, of course, is that we aren't always with all the people we love, all the people with whom we are in union, but not together. We, they're far away. Um, is that sadness? Well, yes, in one sense. In another sense, isn't it wonderful to know that you are in union with someone, perfect love with someone, even though they're not right here, they're right here. Well, maybe the perfect Christmas isn't snow, isn't the perfect Christmas tree, decorations. Maybe it's how I live. Maybe a perfect Christmas is the desire I have to live more peacefully with the imperfect. That living with the imperfect might be what perfection is. Being in union with those with whom we have differences. But differences don't have to be divisive. God is in our midst. Rejoice always. Do not be afraid. Those are words that lead us to say, I would like to work these remaining days of Advent <clears throat> towards a union that might be experienced even more deeply at the imperfect, perfect Christmas. We pray for that experiencing the union that God gives us within us. God is in our midst, in our hearts, and I can extend that love to others. That would be a perfect Christmas. <laughs>